some great things coming up for you at the end of the month for our 30th anniversary. Uh, to think that Newport Church has been existing for 30 years, three decades, uh, really is exciting. And um, for me, I know it's really exciting because I remember when New Mannheim was sent out, which was Newport Church, this Newport N Church now it used to be Mannheim celebration uh, when it came out of uh, our central celebration. And so really, it's been awesome to see what God has been doing through this congregation for all these many years, and we're going to have opportunity to celebrate that at the end of the month. So really excited about that. But this morning, we are in Proverbs. This is the month uh, that we're in Proverbs, uh, journey, uh, January in Proverbs, and we have the opportunity this morning to share with you about Proverbs. And my message this morning is really about wisdom is worth having. Wisdom is worth having. Uh, we should be reading, actually, today, Proverbs chapter 9. We have a Proverbs every day. Uh, if you have our app, you're getting a push every morning uh, for every proverb that comes out on the day. So like today's the ninth, you're reading Proverbs number nine. We have 31 proverbs and there'll be 31 days in a month. So you'll be able to have one every, every day uh, to read and to really uh, digest and to meditate upon. And it's really an exciting book. And uh, I'd like to just kind of lay a groundwork of what Proverbs is all about. Uh, but before that, I'd like to talk about a book that was written back in 1991. Actually, it didn't start out as a book. It just started out as a gentleman writing down some important things for his son. There was a man that um, had a son named Adam Brown. His name was H. Uh, Jackson Brown. And he decided, because his kid was going off to college, that he wanted to give him some wisdom. And so he actually wrote down some things that he felt would be the most important things that a son would need is prepared for life in a grown-up world. And he wrote this thing down, and this thing caught on fire because it actually became a little booklet. And eventually this booklet was published under the title, Life's, Li Life's Little Instruction Book. And that book has sold more than 10 million copies. Crazy. <laughs> and it spent more than two years on the top of the New York bestsellers list and it's been translated in 33 languages. Now that is just a gentleman writing some wisdom to his son. I want you to know something, approximately about 3,000 years ago, King Solomon did the same thing. And he was one of the wisest men to live, and I'm gonna talk about that in a few moments. And he completed a collection of wisdom too, where he accumulated over the years, and he presented his accumulation of these words of wisdom to his son. And he wanted to give his son some wisdom, wanted to give him something discipline. And he also wanted his son to be able to live a disciplined and prudent life. And so what we have today is what we call the book of Proverbs. He outlines what he wants to do right in the first few verses of Proverbs chapter 1. And if you have our app, you have all the notes, you have all the scriptures within that, also some fill in the blanks as well. So I want to start off with Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2 and to 3. Their purpose, talking about the books of Proverbs, what he's written in this book, is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them to understand the insights of the wise. Verse 3, their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them do what is right, what is just, and what is fair. Now, in essence, even before Mr. Brown wrote his book, the Little Life Instruction Book, Solomon already had wrote us a book on how to live life right, how to live a just life, and how to live a fair life. And this book helps us get our lives together and also keep it together, which is pretty awesome. So the question is, how does Solomon become so wise? And there's a story about that back in 1 Kings chapter 3. It says, that night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Now, that's a pretty bold statement that God has given to Solomon. Basically, Solomon, whatever you want, you got it. Now, that's God saying whatever you want, you got. Man, oh, man, just think about if you were given that. 
that from God, what would you think about? What would you want? Nice car, big house, a lot of money, job, prestige. I don't know. What would you want if God said, whatever you want, Dwayne, whatever you want, Susie, whatever you want, John, whatever you want, Ed, you got it. What would you do with that? Here's Solomon, his response. It says in verse 10, the Lord, because this, uh, uh, sorry, verse 7, first of all, says, Now, O Lord, my God, this is Solomon responding, you have made me king instead of my father David. But I'm a, like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous they cannot be counted. Verse 9. Give me an understanding heart so that I may govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? What I'm asking, Father, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. That was Solomon's ask. Of God. Not for riches, not for more kingdom, not for possessions, not for wives, not for children. Father, give me a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. That was his ask. That's the big ask. And because of that, the Bible said God was pleased with Solomon's response. Verse 10 in 1 Kings chapter 3. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you ask for. I will give you wise and understanding heart, such as no one else has had or ever will have. So he's very pleased with that, but it didn't stop there. Because God was so pleased with what Solomon asked for, he says this in verse 13, and I will, verse 13, and I will also give you what you did not ask for. I'm going to give you riches, and I'm going to give you fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And on top of all that, and if you follow me and obey my commandments and decrees as your father David did, I will also give you a long life. God gave Solomon wisdom. And he passed on that wisdom to us in the book of Proverbs. You see, Solomon realized something. He knew if he had wisdom, you could have about anything else you could think about. <laughs> if you have wisdom, you'll not only be able to make money, but you'll also know how to keep it. If you had wisdom, you'll be able to find and develop friendships, long-lasting friendships. If you had wisdom... You'll learn how to avoid misery, the misery that, bring, that people bring on themselves, and you'll know how to maximize your personal happiness. If you had wisdom, you'll know what to say and when to say it. If you had wisdom, you'll be able to raise your kids in the right way. If you had wisdom, you'll be able to sleep at night because you won't be dreading the consequences of your action. That's what happens when you have wisdom. When you have wisdom, you can just have about anything you can think of because wisdom will lie, lead you and guide you. Sandra Carey said this one time. She wrote this. She said, never mistake knowledge for wisdom. Never mistake knowledge for wisdom because one helps you make a living. The other helps you make a life. Now think which one those are. One helps you make a living. And the other helps you to make a life. I believe knowledge will help you make a living, but wisdom 
will help you to make a life. In the 20th century Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge, it says this. It says, wisdom may be defined as a realistic approach to the problems of life. So where do you get wisdom from? There's really two places that everybody get wisdom from. First of all, is personal experience, which I call trial and error. Basically, one's own experience can certainly be a source of wisdom, but what has to happen is, is that you gotta live life, you gotta make mistakes, you gotta make a lot of trials and errors, you gotta end up having the results of trials and errors, and you waste a lot of time because there's consequences to the errors that we make. Sadly, there's only some people who will only look to gain wisdom this way, and they only will gain it if they survive their errors. So personal experience, you can do that. But you're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to have a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. And you may not make it through some of those errors that you made. Then there's a second way you can get, get wisdom. And that is counsel from others. And that's called proven wisdom. You get personal experience or you can have proven, exp a proven experience from counsel from others. And this is made possible about heeding the advice of those who have gone before you. You avoid wasting years and times and trial and error, and it gives you the opportunity to live life to its fullest measure. You experience life without the burdens or consequences of making earlier mistakes. Now, this form of wisdom is far superior than personal experience. And that is exactly what some of us parents are trying to do with our children. We say, you know what? If you do this, this is going to happen. Why? Because we were the people who did the trial and error stuff. And we blew it. We made the mistakes. We know what it cost us. And we know what it brought to our lives. So we are trying to avoid that for our children by saying, if you do this, this is going to happen this way. And most kids think, oh, you're stupid. You don't know anything. I got experience it for myself. Why? You teach a kid, if you touch the stove and it's hot, it's going to burn you. Guess what a kid will do? They'll go touch the stove. And guess what? They get burnt. <laughs> Why? because they did not listen to the proven experience that was there before them. So it is much better to gain wisdom from those who've already experienced it. That is certainly the far better method of gaining wisdom. That is what the book of Proverbs is all about, and that's what makes the book of Proverbs so valuable. Instead of wasting our short time on earth trying to discover wisdom through process of trial and error, we can go straight to the book of Proverbs. Because wisdom that is divinely inspired by God and proven true by generations of righteous people who live their lives by it is the best wisdom that we can get. I want to say that again. Wisdom divinely inspired by God and proven true by generations of righteous people who lived out their lives by it is the best wisdom you can get. The purpose of the book of Proverbs is stated in the first six verses of that time. I read a couple to you already. Here I go again. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live a disciplined and successful lives to help them to do what is right, just, and fair. Then verse 4. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young, let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those who understand receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables and the words of the wise and their riddles. So King Solomon is laying out right there in these six verses his purpose for writing what he wrote following that. 
The message has it this way. The message paraphrase says it this way. These are the wise sayings of Solomon, David's son, Israel's king, written down so we'll know how to live well and right, to understand what life means and where it's going, a manual for living, for learning what's right, just, and fair, to teach the inexperienced the ropes, and to give our young people a grasp on reality. There's something here also for seasoned men and women, still a thing or two for the experience to learn. Fresh wisdom to probe and penetrate the rhymes and reasons of wise men and women. So Proverbs is, first of all, designed to make a person wise. To make a person wise. For a person to learn how to act wisely and righteously and how to treat others with fairness. To make people wise, to learn how to act wisely, righteously, to treat others with fairness. And also, which I love this, he calls it a simple, in some places he called it ignorant. He says to give the ignorant or the fool common sense, to give the young sound advice, and to give the wise even more wisdom. Proverbs says a lot about the benefits of wisdom and what having wisdom will do for each and every one of us. In the first nine chapters of Proverbs, there are at least ten benefits that I found in one of my resources that I'd like to follow and to give you here this morning. Ten ways that you're going to benefit from wisdom, and they all start with the letter P. First of all, the first word is perception. Wisdom will give you an accurate perception of life. Proverbs 2, verse 9 and 10 says this. Then you'll understand what is right, just, and fair. And you'll find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. The Passion Translated has it this way. Then you discover all that is just, proper, and fair, and be empowered to make the right decisions as you walk into your destiny. When wisdom wins your heart and revelation breaks in, true pleasure will enter your soul. So wisdom gives you actual perception of life, actually lets you see where your life is, where you're going, what you're doing, No fanfare, reality. That's what wisdom will give you. And because of that, you can walk in life with joy because you know exactly where you're going. You have the proper perspective on the way God wants you to see life and how he wants you to proceed. What an awesome thing, perception. Second thing I think is so very important. Second P is prevention. Wisdom will prevent you from engaging in self-destructive behavior. And if you've been reading Proverbs up to this point, you saw in Proverbs a lot of Proverbs 6, a lot of 6 and 7 and even 8 on about don't be a fool. Watch out for this. This is going to give you self-destruction. This is going to hurt you. This is going to damage you. Gives you a lot of that. Also in chapter 2, it talked a lot about uh, wisdom and and prevention. Uh, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 12. It says, wisdom will save you from evil people. Proverbs 2, uh, verse 16. Wisdom will save you from the immoral woman, from the seductive words of the promiscuous woman. Proverbs 3, 23. They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. So again, prevention. Wisdom will get that for you. Also, third thing is wisdom will prolong your life. Will prolong your life. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Proverbs 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, My child, never forget the things I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfied. It almost goes back to the promise of one of the commandments. Honor your mother and your father, and guess what? Your days will be long on the earth. So Solomon's picking up on this. Solomon's again telling his child, 
Never forget the things I've taught you because those things are going to allow you to bring honor to people, honor to those over you, honor to those around you. And if you store these commands, store these things, store these points of wisdom into your heart, and if you do these things, you're going to live many years. Your life is going to be satisfied. Proverbs 3.8 says this, then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Why? Because wisdom will let you know what you need to do for health. Wisdom will let you know what you do for your body to bring strength into it. That is what wisdom will do. Proverbs 3.16, it says, she offers you long life at her right hand and riches and honors in her left. And when you see the word she or you, it refers to wisdom. When he, when he, in, in Proverbs, when you see that pronoun, it means wisdom. Wisdom offers you long life in her right hand, and wisdom offers you riches and honor in her left. Proverbs 9, 11. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. People ask, how will wisdom add years to my life? One simple way, it reduces stress. When you have wisdom, it reduces stress, which undoubtedly will then lower your blood pressure, which also provides for longer life. Having wisdom adds years to your life, and as the clay, uh, piche goes, it adds life to your years. The fourth thing that wisdom will do for you, the fourth B is peace. As you develop wisdom, you will experience peace. Proverbs 3.16, again, the pronoun she. She will guide you down delightful paths, and all her ways are satisfied. And that's she is wisdom. Wisdom will guide you down delightful paths, and all her ways, wisdom's ways, are satisfied. Proverbs uh, 3, verse 24. You can go to bed without fear. You can lie down and sleep soundly. That's what wisdom will give you. Wisdom will give you peace. Number five, wisdom gives you prosperity. Proverbs 3, verse 2. Follow closely every truth I give you, then you will have a full, rewarding life. Proverbs 3, 16. Wisdom extends to you long life in one hand and wealth and promotion in the other. And that's, again, this, that's the Passion Translation of a Proverbs that I read earlier to you. See, Proverbs says so much, if you read through it, it says so much about wisdom and wealth that we could actually spend a whole entire week on that subject because it's covered a lot in Proverbs. You read it through, you're going to read a lot about how wisdom will bring you wealth, and when you have wealth, it should bring you wisdom as well. The sixth one is poise. Have you ever seen someone who is at ease in every situation? I'm not referring to someone who's cocky or arrogant, but I'm talking about a person who has true quiet confidence because wisdom gives you true and quiet confidence. You know who you are. You know who is God is in you. You know what he's called you to do. Proverbs 3.26 says, because God is your confidence in times of crisis, keeping your heart at rest in every situation. We sung about that this morning. Because of our confidence in God, because we know that we're not standing alone in the fire, because we know that we're not getting crushed down by the waves that's going to come down over us, but somebody's holding us back, somebody's standing us within fire, because of that, that confidence we have in God, that gives us peace. <laughs> that gives us poise. Because we have a quiet type of confidence based on who we know God is inside of us. The seventh thing is protection. God gives us protection. Wisdom keeps you safe. Proverbs 4, uh, verse 6. It says, stick with wisdom and she'll stick with, to you. <laughs> Protecting you throughout your days. Wisdom will rescue all those who passionately listen to her voice. Stick to wisdom, and wisdom will stick 
to you. So wisdom will keep you safe. Number eight is precision. Wisdom gives you the ability to take the right number of steps in the right direction at the right place and at the right time. Wisdom is the ability to take the right number of steps in the right direction at the right time in the right place. Proverbs 4.12 says, Your progress will have no limits when you come along with me and you'll never stumble as you walk along the way. Your problems, your progress will have no limits when you come along with me, wisdom. And when you have wisdom, you will never stumble as you walk, walk along the way. That's number eight. Number nine is prudence. And if it wasn't for uh, our former president, George W. Bush, or Dana Carvey's impersonation of George Bush, this, might not, this word might not be recognizable, but of course we've heard the phrase, not going to do it, wouldn't be prudent. Not going to do it, wouldn't be prudent. We wouldn't know what prudent was unless we heard George Bush or David, Dana Carvey say that. But uh, the word prudence actually appears more than a dozen times in the book of Proverbs. And the word prudent actually means caution, discretion, or simply good sense. So wisdom will give us prudence. Wisdom helps you to exercise caution when you need to exercise caution. It gives you the sense to hold back when you need to hold back. See, a fool will jump on ahead, but wisdom will let you know this is not the right time, not the right place, not the right steps for you to do right now. A fool just leaps ahead without even thinking. So wisdom will do that for you. Wisdom, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12 I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discernment. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence, and I possess knowledge and discretion. And the last thing, number 10, wisdom pays. Proverbs 9, 12. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. Now think about it. With wisdom, you got peace, confidence, you got a long life, prosperity, you got understanding, good sense, sense of direction, sense of protection. And on top of that, more rewards besides. That's what wisdom will give you. So why wouldn't you want wisdom? So I, my thesis for all this was based on the fact I think wisdom is worth having. Proverbs 1.7 says this, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of knowledge, but fools, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. The Passion Translated says that same scripture this way. We cross the threshold of true knowledge and we live in obedient devotion to God. Stubborn know-it-alls will never stop to do this for they scorn true wisdom and knowledge. You do not have to wait to be old and gray to have wisdom or to be wise. You can become wise even if you're young and green. Remember I said that Solomon wrote this for the young to become wise. Even though wisdom will take some years, developing wisdom is a process that grows over some years, but the older you get, the more wise you should become, which then people will benefit from and you'll benefit from no matter when you start. Even at this very moment, if you were a fool, <laughs> you can become wise starting today. 
if you just begin to live some of these truths out, because this is not just for the few. These words of wisdom is written for everyone. And if we live by those rules, w- rules of wisdom here, we will be victorious. And how do we do that? You start on the path to wisdom by, first of all, putting God first in your life. That is so very important foundationally. So if you don't know God, first of all, this is a great opportunity to get to know him because that's so very important about knowing about wisdom, knowing about these things that God has laid out for us, how to live our lives. And why is that so important? Because God created each and every one of us. We've been designed by him uniquely. Not one person in this world is made the same. We're all different, made uniquely, like the beautiful flowers. All flowers, may, they may look like, but they're, they're uniquely different. There's so many different flowers, and we have been created so differently. But God has a purpose and a plan for you and a plan for me. So you need to find out what the Creator's plan is for you, and that's where you start, getting in touch with the Creator, getting in touch through the Creator, through His Son, Jesus Christ, that through Jesus Christ, we come to know who the Father is, how much He loves us, how much He provides for us, how He wants to direct us, how he wants to fulfill the purpose that he designed us to do in this world in which we live. And it's so simple just recognizing the work of Jesus Christ, that he lived, he died for us, he died on the cross, he resurrected from the dead, he lives a, a life, he's alive today at a position of power, and sitting next to his father, fulfilling the plans and purposes that he had for him so that we can have life through Jesus and through the Father. And I, I would be remiss to say this as well. No discussion can be complete about, about, about wisdom without mentioning Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Jesus Christ is where the treasures, all treasures of wisdom and knowledge resides. So it's not just knowing the words of wisdom out of the book of Proverbs, but it's also knowing the author of wisdom, Jesus Christ himself. Because without Jesus Christ in our lives, there's really no way to be truly wise. So I want to encourage you this morning to to delve into Proverbs. There's so much wisdom within this book. Uh, Read it, meditate on it. Uh, Read it in other translations, which is also pretty powerful because you can read something differently. I read this morning some of the Passion Translation. also read out New Living Translation this morning. I also read out an NIV this morning. also read out the message this morning. So there's so much wealth that we have today to get a deeper understanding into some of these, these truths that we need to incorporate within our lives. Because again, God has pro- provided for us to live a life of peace, live a life of confidence, live a life of prosperity, live a life of understanding, live a life of good sins, get a life of direction, substance of protection, and to also on top of all that, as he did with Solomon, besides all this, my son and my daughter, I'm going to add these other blessings and benefits to you as well because you followed my commands and my decrees. Our God is a good God, and he wants to bless you and bless me. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I thank you for the truths in the book of Proverbs this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the the opportunity you've given us as a church body to go through the book of Proverbs together, day by day, proverb by day, and Lord, to be able to read that and digest it and meditate on it. I pray, Father, for each and every one of us, whether we're young or old, that Father will get something out of our reading, that some truth some understanding, some wisdom will come out of it that we can apply to our lives, that we can live a life much fuller, uh, much at peace, protected, prudent. Lord, all the things you already said that we can learn out of this book of Proverbs, let that be applied to our lives. Let us be wise people. Father, let us be, like the sons of Sceva, be able to discern the season and to know how to respond. Let it, we need that wisdom today, O oh Lord. That's beyond knowledge. We need wisdom today on how to live, how to be able to do the right thing in the right way at the right time to be the right results. And Lord, you said in your word, if any of us lack wisdom, we can ask you, because you're not a respecter person, you'll give wisdom to all who ask. 
Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for this team who's made uh, this online broadcast possible. Thank you for their serving this morning. And Father, bless our body of Christ. Wherever they're seated, seated at this morning, around the breakfast table, on, uh, on the, sitting on the sofa, you know, wherever they may find themselves, sitting in, maybe even sitting in bed, Lord. We ask, Father, you bless them today. Let this day be a rich day for them. Let this week be a blessed week. And Father, we come against every sickness, every disease, every weapon formed against us, because you said in your word, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every lying tongue shall be cast down, for that's the inheritance of the saints of God. And Lord, I declare over each and every one of us, we are saints. We love you, Lord Jesus. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Be blessed. Thank you for being part of our service this morning. See ya. Thank you so much for watching this teaching. I hope that it impacted you in some way. If you enjoyed this teaching and would like more teachings like this, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get updated each time we post a new sermon.